Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm in a crappy hotel room in Lompoc in Southern California. Why? Because I'm here at a Vandenberg Air Force Base for a rocket launch for the last Delta II, but we will be coming up with more about that uh, after the launch. What I want to talk about right now is SpaceX. Elon Musk last night announced to the world that a private passenger was going to pay to fly around the moon in the BFS. That is the big upper stage of the BFR. And there's a lot of interesting things this brings up. Well, first of all, obviously, we knew the previous paying passengers were going to get denied because the Falcon Heavy was not going to be uh, human rated. But, um, so this is presumably someone else. Uh, there was a lot of questions. Who is this person? Well, find out on Monday is what they said. But when asked, Elon Musk tweeted out a picture of the Japanese flag. Now, perhaps he was just, a, you know, watching some crazy Akira Kurosawa movie, or maybe this is some hint to the nationality of the individual. Now, yeah, there's a bunch of billionaires out of Japan, I'm sure. Or maybe it's uh, the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto, who's finally cashing in all his Bitcoin and flying around the moon. But also, from a rocket fan standpoint, the image that accompanied it was fascinating because it's a new variation, a new redesign of the upper stage. Now, we've seen a couple of redesigns since the initial uh, announcement a few years ago. This new one, well, the detail isn't great on it, but eagle-eyed SpaceX watchers were able to see a few things. First of all, the fins. It now has three big fins, and the top one appears to be rigid and fixed in place, but the bottom ones look like they may have hinge hardware. So that may make it easier. That might be required for flying down, obviously, and then they might fold them back flat for landing because it also looks like there are landing gear or landing pads in the tips of the fins, so they should be able to land on the fins. That's what people are thinking. Of course, this is a single image. The heat shielding now is uh, extending around halfway. The window configuration has changed. We've got those big windows back at the front again. At the front, there also appears to be some sort of new aerodynamic feature. It looks like it's some sort of variable geometry hardware. It might not be a wing, it might be more, uh, a, let's just say it's a reconfigurable air, surf air control surface. It might need this to be able to flip around in the atmosphere of Mars and land on its tail engines. The engines, now the design that we had seen previously had four vacuum optimized engines and three surface optimized engines. If you know engines, then you'll know that the engine bell has to be larger if you want to get more efficient performance in a vacuum. But if you make it too large, then the combustion becomes unstable inside an atmosphere. So the upper stage was designed to do a bit of both and so that they could land and they could fly and get most efficiency and all that. But yes, now it has six, or sorry, seven engines with the same sized engine bell, which leads to many questions. Have they decided to compromise on a, a surface rated engine? That may or may not seem right. Uh, is it possible they've come up with some sort of a compromise engine bell shape, such as the space shuttle main engine, where it's designed to work in a vacuum, but it has this change of curvature right near the exit that keeps the uh, the exhaust gas is pinned to the surface so that you don't get combustion instability, so you don't get the uh, this detachment near the surface. It's an aerodynamics uh, rocket. It's just rocket science, right? Look at my other video on it, and I use the language properly. Uh, however, another eagle-eyed inspector suggests that there is new structure around the engines in general, and hypothesized that perhaps what they're going to do is have some sort of skirt that comes down and provides extra uh, extra nozzle space for all seven engines. I'm not convinced by that because for a start, the engine, the picture shows it flying around the back of the moon and that would be in vacuum anyway. So I would presume that this is the vacuum con uh, configuration. So look, they're going to have some big press announcement on Monday and I'm guessing I'm going to watch it. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to take to develop this. I mean, timelines uh, are an interesting question when it comes to the BFS because obviously developing a new rocket takes lots of money. And while Falcon is doing something like 20 launches a year, 
uh, 60 million dollars times 20 that's you know that's probably enough to pay the salaries of everyone working there it's not necessarily enough to pay for the huge amount of development that may be needed to, to for the BFR so I you know we're not sure where money is coming from for that or how much because of course SpaceX is a private company we don't get to see this kind of data now maybe you know this is partly to fund this maybe the you know this announcement is to essentially catalyze more people to spend a ton of money on this but uh yeah this is another interesting announcement also given the time that it's been announced i won't i would imagine that this sls crewed mission around the moon will get there first because it would take frankly a miracle even by spacex's standards to get the BFR and BFS flying and you know make them do the refueling and head around the moon. Yeah, uh, interesting, but we'll see what happens. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.